At the first public hearing on the January 6th insurrection on Thursday, Liz Cheney announced that multiple members of Congress sought a presidential pardon from Donald Trump. Now, this is an absolute bombshell because if these members of Congress are going to the president for a pardon, then obviously they believe that they broke the law and were at risk of being prosecuted for it. So uh, I think that the public has a right to know who. And so Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez took to Twitter to pretty bluntly ask which one of you asked for a presidential pardon. So in response to Lauren Boebert's tweet, which reads, 1984 called and they want their bleak, immoral, thuggish, and deadly totalitarian dystopian future back. AOC asks, hey, quick question, Boebert. Did you ask for a pardon after tweeting the speaker's location on January 6th? You and the KKK caucus have been really quiet about it today. And given how much y'all have to say, I'm not sure why no one's responding to this simple question. She then tags Marjorie Greene asking the same thing. Maybe your friend Marjorie Greene can answer. Did either of you seek a pardon? Just trying to clear some things up. Now, when it comes to Matt Gates, she asks, hey, Matt Gates, while I have you responding to my tweets, can you respond to one more for me? Did you ever ask Trump for a pardon? Let me know in the replies. You clearly know where the button is. Now, for context, she was engaging with Matt Gates because she called him out and he responded. Basically, she quote tweeted a video from Patriot Takes where they shared Matt Gates and Marjorie Greene having a conversation, probably on their podcast or something, because of course every member of Congress has a podcast. But he was talking about Jamie Raskin, who's a member of the January 6th committee. And he claimed that Jamie Raskin was unable to be a participant here because he's too distraught from his son's death. I mean, to use his son's death against him and suggest that he's not qualified to participate in this is truly just gross, but it's the low that you'd expect members of the GOP to stoop to. So AOC took to Twitter to respond and defend Raskin, saying, Representative Raskin is a greater statesman, congressman, human being than most of us. History will remember him. Tommy was a remarkable person and testament of his parents' love. Gates is a bad haircut in a cheap suit, a feat of mediocrity given that he's here on Papa's money. Bye. Now, that was very brutal. So Matt Gates responded saying, one, a lot of people like my hair. I don't believe that's true. Two, my suits are cheap. Not sorry. And three, stop trying to date me. I'm married. Now, I've got to share Lance from the Surf's response with you, who came in with the death blow ratio saying, even her political career might be too old for you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Lance has no chill. That was just incredible. Now, the reason why I'm sharing these back and forths with you is not to pump your head full of useless melodrama from Congress people, but to demonstrate how all of a sudden Matt Gates just stopped replying. Now, this is really interesting because usually members of Congress like this, Marjorie Greene, Lauren Boebert, Matt Gates, the three idiots in Congress, they go out of their way to instigate Twitter drama with AOC, members of the squad, so they can maybe, I don't know, brag about it, do it for clout, fundraise off of it. Either way, they're constantly trying to pick fights with AOC on Twitter. But all of a sudden, Matt Gates goes from engaging with AOC to going conspicuously silent. Marjorie Greene, who always responds to every single thing AOC says, didn't respond here. Now, Lauren Boebert unwisely decided to respond to AOC's question, but as you're going to see, she avoided that question like the plague, saying, Okay, Sandy, $5 a gallon gas, three plus million illegals crossing our southern border, no baby formula, inflation higher than it's been in both of our lifetimes, and this is what you want to talk about? Your policies are failing America, and you're going to lose the House come November. In other words, yes, I did ask Donald Trump for a pardon. That is a superfluous way of saying, yes. Just admit it. And I love how she tries to pivot to policy substance as if she cares. Lauren, you voted against increasing funding to address the baby formula shortage. You voted against capping the prices of gas. Maybe your husband being a consultant for the fossil fuel industry has something to do with that. I'm sure that he's really happy about the high gas prices. So don't pretend as if you care about the working people. Stop LARPing as a populist. You don't give a fuck about these things. And if you actually did care about policy, you would propose one. I don't know that she actually knows what policy is. But, I mean, this is what they do. They deflect, they obfuscate, and they gaslight. But their silence here is deafening. Their answers here, that non-answer that Lauren Boebert gave, it's 
pretty sus, if you ask me. Now, in an interview with Dana Bash on CNN, Dana had asked Representative AOC whether or not she believes that they did ask for a pardon. Um, take a look at what she had to say in response. Vice Chair Liz Cheney revealed that multiple Republican members of Congress, Congress asked for presidential pardons after January 6th. You went on Twitter and directly asked Republican Congressman Gates, Boebert, and Green if they were the ones who asked for pardons. Do you have a reason to believe that they were? Well, we do know that Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, in the middle of all of that footage that we saw yesterday of people kind of coming into the Capitol was actively tweeting the speaker's location, was tweeting evocative, you know, really provocative statements like this is 17, today is 1776. And it very much, I believe, indicates a side here. And when you don't know which of your colleagues were part of a potential conspiracy, uh, then we need to find out. And frankly, from a lot of the behavior that we have seen both in committee inside uh, the workings of the House, I believe that every member of Congress should be able to answer that question. I'm happy to answer this question. I know that uh, Representative Jerry Connolly, Representative Shelley Pingree, we are more than willing to offer that we did not seek a pardon uh, from the White House either before or after January 6th or frankly at any point in time. And I believe that it's a very simple question that every single member of Congress should be able to answer. Well, people like Scott Perry, are, they're denying it. You just don't believe them? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we'll see what uh, the evidence that the committee lays out uh, will be. But if the committee, as indicated, has evidence that several members of Congress did seek a pardon, you do have Representative uh, Perry refusing to comply with a bipartisan investigation into the events of January 6th. You know, I, I believe that the committee would never make an allegation so serious without very substantial evidence to, to present to the American public. Yeah, she's exactly right. And to be clear, to emphasize this point, because it's very important, you don't seek a pardon unless you reasonably believe that you broke the law. And where there's smoke, there's fire. We know that this was going to be the case. In fact, in October of 2021, Rolling Stone published an article explaining that insurrectionists claimed to have coordinated with multiple members of Congress. And yes, they named names. Quote, I remember Marjorie Taylor Greene specifically, the organizer says. I remember talking to probably close to a dozen other members at one point or another or their staffs. Along with Greene, the conspiratorial pro-Trump Republican from Georgia who took office earlier this year, the pair both say the members who participated in these conversations or had top staffers join included Representative Paul Gosar, Lauren Boebert, Mo Brooks, Madison Cawthorn, Andy Biggs, and Representative Louis Gohmert. We would talk to Boebert's team, Cawthorn's team, Gosar's team, like back to back to back to back, says the organizer. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if the members of Congress who quite literally coordinated with members who planned the insurrection asked Donald Trump for a pardon. Very, very interesting. Now, unfortunately, we live in a society where we have a two-tier justice system where if you're a powerful elite, if you're wealthy, you don't get held accountable. So there was actually a lawsuit to keep Marjorie Greene off the ballot since she not only broke the law but violated the Constitution by participating in an in insurrection. But she was cleared by Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger of Georgia. So, you know, these Congress members are lucky because they're not going to see a day in jail at all. Like, I would be shocked if anyone was prosecuted, including Donald Trump. But if you're not going to prosecute these individuals, which I don't believe is going to happen, then at a minimum, the lowest expectation is that we should know who asked for a pardon. Because that tells you that they know they broke the law. So, yeah, I'm glad that AOC is putting pressure on them. I want all members of Congress to do this, exert so much pressure on them, that this is all they hear about. Every time the member of media asks them a question, it should be, have you answered directly as to whether or not you sought a pardon from President Trump? Like, you have to keep the pressure on them because you see right here, they try to deflect. They try to change the conversation, but that doesn't change the fact that we know that these insurrectionists broke the law and they know that they broke the law as much as they want to pretend as if January 6th wasn't a big deal. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button 
or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.